Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of fiberglass shaping, going over a new way of dealing with certain types of stress cracks that I have not shown before. And at the very end, we're going to be doing a mail call that I think you might get a little bit of a kick out of. So let's get started. So in last week's video, there were a few people that were asking, why in the world did I leave all those wisps sticking up in the air when I was laying the glass? And honestly, this is one of those things where it's just, it's a lot easier to show you than it is to try and explain it. And well, I guess the short answer is that it saves time and it makes less of a mess. So because those little hairs aren't full of resin, they don't, when you're sanding them, they don't create dust. And more importantly, when you're sanding them and they're dry, they just shave right off. It's like taking a brand new razor and, well, if you're a guy shaving your face or if you're a girl, you know, shaving some other parts. <laughs> but anyways, it just, it just peels right off, uh, easy peasy. And when it comes down to doing this kind of work, this little belt sander is just such a little champ. I mean, the radius on the end of this, I, I don't know how it have worked out that way. Maybe it's just way Makita engineered it. But the, the radius on the end of that little sander thing, it matches almost 90% of, of every radius on almost every boat. It's just, it's so nice for shaping and just doing whatever you need to do. It's just, it's the ideal tool for something like this. And if this little sander is something you'd like to get your hands on, I will have an Amazon link down below in the description where you can check it out. So moving on to the stress cracks now, over the past few years, there's been a couple of different ways that I've figured out how to manage these things. And the primary one, which is the one that you've always seen me do in the past, is to essentially grind down an area, lay over some, some uh, chop strand matting or some type of fiberglass over the area that's cracked, and then refarit and finish over top of that. And when you're talking about an area that deals, that's dealing with a, a large area, you know, and it's not just a, a small little spot, but it's a large area and it is severely cracked, uh, that's really the best way to do it. Now, the other type of crack, which is something you, I, I, you see kind of often, not as, not as often as like the big widespread cracks, but uh, you, you still run across it every once in a while. And that's the, the type of cracking that's very localized. They're typically short cracks running longitudinal to the boat. You know, in, by other words, or in other words, it's not, it doesn't look like a spider web, I guess is probably the easiest way to, uh, to uh, explain what I'm trying to talk about. But, and that's what we're going to be dealing with today. So let me grab the other camera and let's go handheld. <laughs> okay, so let's just hope I don't fall off the scaffolding here. But this is the type of crack that I'm talking about right here. It's just a, kind of a, a lone wolf and hopefully the camera is picking this up. But it's just kind of a, a lone crack off by itself. There's one here. There's another one kind of starting here. And then a little bit more is going on right up in here. But it, again, it's, you're talking an area that's maybe two inches long. And then finally, one more, one long one that's just kind of like straggling off and coming down around the side here. When dealing with this kind of a crack, I first tried this way of, of managing it about six years ago. For the first time, it was a total experiment, which I don't like doing. But on, this, on that particular project, it was in an area that was just, it was just, it would have been almost impossible to get some glass laid in there and, you know, what have you. So I, I, I took a chance. And that was six years ago on a uh, on another powerboat. It was a twenty, it was a what a Tierra twenty eight, yeah, so it's a twenty eight foot Tierra, and just kind of kept my fingers crossed. wasn't quite sure what was going to come of it, and it worked out absolutely phenomenal. Uh, six years later, nothing has nothing's come up, nothing's cracked, it's just, it held. And the reason that that happened is because of the type of epoxy that I used. Now, typically, traditional epoxy, it, it cures to a very hard, rigid cure, I guess. It's, there isn't any, uh, it, it just, it doesn't allow for any movement. Now, over the past, I'd say probably five, maybe six years, uh, a, a few of the, ma the epoxy manufacturers have come up with what's called a flexible epoxy. And it's, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. 
It's a type of epoxy that it, it still bonds just as tenaciously as a, a traditional epoxy, but the way that they've kind of tweaked the recipe a little bit is it allows a little bit of flex and movement, so rather than being so rigid that it just recracks and, and opens back up, it's able to move with the surrounding area and still maintain that bond. And that's what we're going to be using today, and that's what I used on that other project as well. So for this part of the project, the epoxy I'm going to be using is a Total Boat Thyxoflex. So for getting these cracks prepped, I'm going to be using a die grinder with roughly about a quarter inch tip on it. And if you don't have a die grinder, I mean, you could easily use a, uh, like a Dremel tool as well. Although the one thing I would say is that you'll, you'll want to use as large of a tip as you can. Now when you, cook, you zoom in and look on this and you use my finger as reference, it's, it's somewhat in a V shape. And at the, at the very point here, that's probably about a quarter inch and it expands out to, eh, that's probably about a half inch there. And the reason that that's important is you want to have as much good surface area as possible along the sides for the epoxy to bond, to bond onto. Because uh, when you think about it, this epoxy is essentially going to be bridging over this small little rogue crack. And you, the, the more surface area that it has to bond onto that's solid, the better off you're going to be. So that's why I was making the comment, if you're going to be using a Dremel tool, try to use as, as wide of a tip as possible, or you can go over it uh, a few different times just to kind of widen out the area that you're, that you're dishing out. So now with the area prepped and cleaned, now we're able to start gunning out the epoxy. And as I mentioned before, the epoxy we're going to be using is the Total Boat. It's a flexible epoxy. Now what's kind of cool about this stuff is that it, it, as, you're, as you're pumping it out, it self-mixes inside this fancy little tube here. And it, when you look in the tip here, you can see there's two little holes. Uh, inside the cartridge, there's a part A and a part B, and each one gets directed into a separate, uh, separate column. But then as it's forced through the, the tip here, it, it just does one of these deals and, and just mixes, it, mixes itself through the, uh, you know, throughout this, uh, this nozzle. So now the one thing I will say about using these types of cartridges where you've got the, the self-mixing tip on them is that sometimes they can be rather difficult to actually you know, squeeze out of the gun. And they say right on here you're supposed to use, it's a particular type, they want you to use like an 8 to 1 minimum type of compression. So I'm guessing for one pound of pull on the trigger, you get eight pounds of force you know, on the plunger here. Now the particular gun that I'm using here, this is made by Newborn. And this one, I believe, let's see if I can find it on here somewhere. Uh, this, one has, this one in particular has an 18 to one compression. So, and if you are interested, the model number, where is that? The model number is 250. So let's, uh, let's get everything kind of loaded up here and gunned out. Okay, so I think this stuff is pretty self-explanatory to use, but let's go through the, the setup here real quick. Now, just for good measure, I'm just going to put on some gloves. I don't think I'm going to need them. I doubt they'll even get dirty. But better safe than sorry. Now, on the, on the tube, basically, you got a cap here. 
So remove the cap, and I've got a piece of plastic laid down right here that uh, I'm going to be laying all this stuff on. And then on the very tip, you've got another little cap. And that just pulls out. And drop that right there. And then the tip, or what's called the, the static mixer, I'm going to screw that on nice and tight. I do not want any, anything to squeeze out you know, through, uh, through the bottom here. And then beyond that, it's a matter of putting it in the gun and uh, putting it to good use. Now they do say on here that uh, because this is a static mixer, so the, the first, probably the first two pumps that you put out of here, just to make sure it's not you know, a little bit heavy on the resin or a little bit heavy on the hardener, it's a good idea to, for the first couple of pumps just to squeeze it out on something scrap and just you know, consider that garbage. Uh, once you get past those first couple of pumps, then everything in here should be going through at the correct ratio and you should be all set. So I've got my piece of plastic down. Give this a few pumps. Oh man, this is way easier than. Yeah, this is a nice gun. <laughs> okay, so I've gone through two pumps, and you, if you look carefully, you can see it's a little bit lighter here, and then as you work through this line, it got darker. So I'm guessing this was more resin than hardener, and then by the time we got through here, it everything looks to be good. So then at this point, it's just a matter of gunning it into these cracks. <laughs> Now, just for good measure, I'm going to take a mixing stick. I want to make sure that there's good, solid contact with this epoxy al along these sides. So I'm just going to come in and just lightly take the mixing stick and just kind of push it down into the crack a little bit. And that's about it for today. We got to let it cure, and we'll be back in the morning. So welcome back, everybody. It is the following, oh, come on, who am I kidding? It's been like two days. But anyways, our epoxy has set up. Not that it took the two days, it's just, well. So now I'm ready to start sanding this down. And I could easily come back and do this with a regular, you know, a DA or orbital sander. But just because it's such a small area and that hose on my sander always frustrates me. I'm going to use the belt sander just because I think it'll be actually a little bit faster and just give me a little bit more control, especially down around the areas where it's kind of close to the actual rub rail. So let me get everything set up and get this knocked down. Just like that, this area is done. Well, it, it, well, at least for now. I mean, I'll come back with some fairing compound and pretty it all up after I've gotten all the, the majority of the glass laid up on this foredeck, but for now, it's gonna go on hold. But before we move on to the last part of this video, I wanted to show you how that little sample... Okay, so evidently I forgot to record this, but what I did before I turned the camera off was I, I gunned out a small strip of this flexible epoxy and let it cure just so, you know, the next day, well, actually two days later, then we could actually see how flexible it really is. So, okay, back to the show. Strip of this epoxy turned out after it cured. 
So just kind of showing this as a bit of a demo for the amount of flexibility. I mean, it flexes. I mean, it's still got some strength to it, but it's definitely flexible, which is for an area like this with these rogue cracks that we, uh, that we just filled in, this kind of material is absolutely perfect for that. So knowing that anything will break eventually, let me just see how far this stuff will bend before it actually snaps. Well, <laughs> evidently quite a ways. All right, that's just straight up impressive. Well, like I said, everything breaks eventually, so <laughs> let's move on to the next segment. So a little while back, I reached out to a couple of friends of mine that also have YouTube channels here to see if they would be interested in swapping stickers. And I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but the reason I want to do it is I've made it kind of a, a little bit of a goal for this year. It's 2019 now that by the end of this year, I want to have pretty much every inch of square surface on my bandsaw covered with, other sti with stickers from other channels. So, so far I've gotten two back, and one of the channels I am most certain that most of you, if not all of you, are going to be familiar with. Uh, the other one, you may or may not know. Uh, it's not boating related, it's more along the lines of ranching, gardening, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, either way, if you're not familiar with him, you should check it out. I'll include links down below in the description for his channel. And so, yeah, so in the meantime, I'm dying to open these up. <laughs> okay, let's do this one first. Does that give it away? So, well, let's see, we got three of them here. So, well, obviously, I'm pretty sure this gives it away. <laughs> And then, uh, pretty dang spiffy. And then the glorious, glorious sanding. I can't do it as well as Moss can, but I can still try. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you, Moss. And then this one, this is from Mike and Aaron. Their channel is called Our Wyoming Life. And good Lord, guys, could you have made it any bigger? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, awesome guys, thank you. So let me go get the bandsaw cleaned up and get the, God damn it. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. Now, as always, I wanna thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit, hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions, leave those down below as well and I'll do my best to get back with you. And yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you have a great week and I will see you again next weekend. Thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today production.